The latest crop progress report from Nebraska's National Agricultural Statistics Service rates nearly three-fourths of Nebraska's corn in good to excellent condition. The state's growers have harvested only a percent of the crop, three points behind their five-year average. Nebraska Extension plant pathologist Tamara Jackson Zim says farmers should be watching for stock rot diseases in certain areas, including dieback causing sudden browning in the upper part of the plant. We talked with Tamara earlier this week near Clay Center, Nebraska, and began by asking for an overview of stock rot issues. We're starting to see some stalk rots in different areas of Nebraska and not in every field, of course, but here and there we are. And people are recognizing that some of the plants are beginning to die prematurely. Sometimes it's entire plants. Sometimes it's just the tops of the plants. Yeah, describe to me what they should be looking for in those fields. Well, in those fields, that, that's a good indication there might be an early problem going on. And so we hope that folks will get out and they'll scout in those fields to look for high risk situations that might lead to lodging later on. And of course, there's a number of diseases that can cause that too. You wanna to be doing anything specific with those plants to tell if they have specific stock rot diseases? Well, in the field, we hope they do a few things. So when scouting for stalk rot diseases, I would recommend using the push or the pinch test to really evaluate any weakness in that stalk below the ear that might lead to lodging later on. It is also a good idea to know which diseases are impacting those plants. In the past, we didn't think that there was a whole lot of value in diagnosing it this time of year, but now we have more resistant hybrids to many of those diseases, and so there is more value now in the diagnostics side of this. Is there a need to go out and split stems? That actually is part of the diagnostics process, and some of that's done in the lab, but some of the clues inside those stalks actually can help lead you to the right answer. For example, even the color of the stalk rot symptoms inside that pith can give you some clues. What are the high-risk areas? So there's a lot of situations that we've had, that weather conditions, for instance, throughout the year that have led to stress on the crop throughout this summer and spring that create high risk situations for diseases like stalk rot diseases. Well, the pathogens that cause all of these fungal stalk rots are in the field every year all the time. And so the plants become compromised when they're under a lot of stress. And so in our case this year, we had a lot of very wet conditions early on and a lot of ponding in the fields. And so that predisposed a lot of these plants to some of that, some of those stalk rots but also it leads to secondary problems. We, we had a lot of nitrogen leaching, for instance, and a lot of nitrogen deficiency. And when we get an imbalance of nitrogen and some of the other nutrients, it can lead to problems later on like stalk rots. In addition, uh, high planting populations and our very high yielding uh, hybrids can also be ones that might be hit with stalk rots because those plants are programmed to fill grain at all cost. And if they've had a lot of leaf loss caused by diseases or hail or insects, it will actually contribute to stalk loss because the plants will cannibalize the stalk tissue. You mentioned this, but what are the management options for producers? So management options are things, some of the things that we're already doing. Well, we all try to reduce the stress in the crop throughout the year. Some of those things though, we can have an influence on. And so there are hybrids uh, that are more resistant and more susceptible than others. And so if, it, if stock rots are a consistent problem for some of our producers, they can make their hybrid selections during the fall and winter for the next year for problem fields, making sure to pick hybrids that have more resistance to the specific stock rot diseases that they fight. And Tamara, finally, what other diseases are out there right now? Well, we've had a flush recently of some of the foliar diseases that we've been watching throughout the season. And so uh, during the season, we've seen a lot of gray leaf spot, fungal disease, but we've also had the bacterial leaf streak disease that's out there. Unfortunately, they do look a lot alike. If anyone has any doubt about what they have, now's the time to finally get a diagnosis on that so that they can make better decisions for next year. In addition, uh, we've also seen a flare up of the southern rust here at the end, but we haven't seen much benefit when we uh, make fungicide applications after dent.